Coronavirus cases are way down, but you're supposed to be terrified. A rapper sells Nikes filled with blood. Plus, the commercial space race is underway, and it's explosive. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. With coronavirus deaths dropping and vaccinations becoming more readily available, are you feeling a little optimistic for the first time in over a year? If so, then knock it off and keep living in fear, you maniac. Because at a White House press briefing this week, CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky said this. I'm going to lose the script and I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. We have so much to look forward to, so much promise and potential of where we are, and so much reason for hope. But right now, I'm scared. She says she's worried about a fourth surge of COVID, just as we approach the finish line of the pandemic. Dr. Walensky could also be scared that once this pandemic is over, she won't have a job anymore. She shouldn't worry about that, though. Considering her dramatic abilities, she has a bright future as a TV host on Fox News or CNN? One thing people are increasingly worried about are vaccine passports. In the near future, many businesses may refuse service to customers if they don't show documentation that they've received the COVID-19 vaccine. You may not be able to attend concerts or go on cruises without one of these vaccine passports. But you'll still be allowed in Chipotle since coronavirus is only the 11th most deadly disease you can catch there. A vaccine passport app has already been developed and will soon be implemented in New York. But even some of those who have been vaccinated aren't very comfortable with the idea of vaccine passports. It offers yet another opportunity for businesses and the government to collect our private information. I say, if businesses and the government want to know exactly where I am and what I'm doing every minute of every day, they're just going to have to follow me on TikTok like everyone else. On the bright side, if someone is monitoring everything you do, that means at least one person finally listened to your podcast. We'll have a full episode about vaccine passports next Wednesday, so make sure you're subscribed to America Uncovered. The New York governor has signed a bill that legalizes recreational marijuana. Now Governor Cuomo can legally get high and use it as an excuse for accidentally putting COVID patients in nursing homes and forgetting to make sure they're okay. Sorry, Grandma. Meanwhile, Democratic lawmakers are saying the New York law is way better than all those other state marijuana laws because this legislation is intentional about equity. The idea is that blacks and Latinos have been arrested on marijuana possession disproportionately. That's why some lawmakers insisted that a large portion of the money raised through marijuana taxes be earmarked for black and Latino communities. Meanwhile, white liberals in New York City are busy preparing for the summer of hedonism. Joke's on them, though. White liberals can't smoke weed in public this summer. They have to wear masks through 2022. And if you refuse to wear a mask, you're probably a Trump supporter. I'll be back with more headlines after the break. Welcome back. A vote was held to see if workers in Bessemer, Alabama, will form the first ever labor union at an Amazon warehouse in the U.S. Amazon's grueling working conditions have been criticized for years. Some employees say they're unable to take bathroom breaks. Ahead of this vote, several Amazon employees took to Twitter to defend the company, saying working conditions aren't that bad. Isn't it nice seeing employees that appreciate their employers? Too bad several of those Amazon employees were fake. It was pretty obvious these accounts weren't real. After all, most people tweet while on the toilet, and you wouldn't have time to do that if you worked at Amazon. In order to win, the union needs to collect a simple majority of the votes. As of this recording, we don't know what the result will be. But depending on what happens, this could be the most disappointing story about an Amazon 
since Wonder Woman 1984. Speaking of corporations with inhumane working conditions, our next story is about Nike. Nike is suing Brooklyn art collective Mischief over their unofficial Nike Satan shoes they released in collaboration with rapper Lil Nas X. They've even gotten a temporary restraining order to stop the sales of those shoes. These shoes contain pentagrams, inverted crosses, and allegedly a single drop of human blood. Considering Nike's history of using sweatshops and slave labor, that's actually way less blood than what comes in a usual pair of their shoes. In the lawsuit, Nike said, Mischief and its unauthorized Satan shoes are likely to cause confusion and dilution and create an erroneous association between Mischief's products and Nike. Apparently, Nike isn't a fan of Satan. But considering Nike's history of using sweatshops and slave labor, Satan is a big fan of Nike. Forget Prada. The devil wears Air Max. Speaking of equipment that'll help lift you to new heights, SpaceX's largest rocket isn't that. Experimental SpaceX rocket SN11 exploded at the end of a high-altitude flight test on Tuesday. All three of SpaceX's previous launches of prototypes for this model of rocket crash-landed or exploded shortly after landing. More test launches are scheduled. SpaceX is trying to meet its 2023 deadline of transporting Japanese entrepreneur Yusaki Mazawa on a Starship fun trip around the moon. Maizawa is collecting applications for eight people to accompany him on this fun trip. Yeah, good luck with that. But there is an upside to this story. Considering how good they've gotten at making rockets that travel long distances and then explode when they land, SpaceX has a promising future doing business with North Korea. SpaceX isn't the only company in the commercial space travel race. Virgin Galactic unveiled its newest spaceship on Tuesday. Like SpaceX, Virgin Galactic is also optimistic about commercial space flights being available in the near future, aiming at starting operations next year. Virgin Galactic CEO Michael Colglazer said, we expect as we get going on this to see a much quicker turnaround time and that really will help us grow the business. Jeff Bezos is also a part of this race with his aerospace company Blue Origin set to expand their rocket manufacturing facility. And that expansion should be done in record time, because as we just learned, Jeff Bezos doesn't let his employees take bathroom breaks. With these companies competing, it won't be too long before we see all sorts of advertisements for commercial space travel. Of course, the best advertisement for wanting to leave this planet is still furry conventions. They can have Earth. We clearly need to start over somewhere else. All the companies in the commercial space travel race have faced their own unique challenges. I'm just surprised they haven't had to deal with allegations of racism. You know, since space is black and these rich white guys are trying to colonize it. More after the break. Welcome back. President Biden canceled $1.3 billion of federal student loan debt this week. It covers 41,000 borrowers who have total and permanent disability. This is the second time this month he's canceled student loan debt, having canceled $1 billion two weeks ago for 72,000 student loan borrowers. Canceling private student loan debt could be possible in the future. But for now, Biden's plan moving forward looks to be focused mainly on canceling federal student loan debt. Some people feel this isn't enough. Since the $2.3 billion of student loan debt Biden has forgiven only accounts for a tiny fraction of the $1.7 trillion of student loan debt that's still out there. Look, to make progressives happy, Biden should just say the reason that this particular student loan debt was canceled is because the student debt once tweeted, Cosby did nothing wrong. Also this week, President Biden unveiled a massive $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. On Wednesday, Biden appeared in Pittsburgh to talk about it. So today, I'm proposing a plan for the nation that rewards work, not just rewards wealth. It builds a fair economy that gives everybody a chance to succeed and is going to create the strongest, most resilient, innovative economy in the world. Biden's brief 10-minute speech 
lasted only 30 minutes. Even CNBC got bored watching it and started putting up stock prices on the screen. Hmm, those stock prices are all going down. Must be a coincidence. Biden claims his plan will create millions of jobs, promote national security, and fix crumbling infrastructure on roads, airports, and bridges. It'll fix the nation's 10 most economically significant bridges in America that require replacement. No word on if it'll fix that bridge Biden burned with the African-American community when he said if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. Biden reiterated that this plan is an investment in America. If we act now, in 50 years, people are going to look back and say, this was the moment that America won the future. What I'm proposing is a one-time capital investment of roughly $2 trillion in America's future, spread largely over eight years. I'm a little skeptical. I'm not willing to say we've officially won the future until we finally get a hoverboard. Well, for that, I guess we'll have to wait till 2015, the year this guy runs for president. So how does Biden propose paying for this $2 trillion infrastructure plan? Corporate taxes. Biden said no one making under $400,000 will see their taxes go up, but he will raise the corporate tax to 28% from the 21% rate set in 2017. I hope corporations have their vaccine passports because they're going to need them when they all go overseas. And if you want to know more about what's in the infrastructure plan, check back on Tuesday for an in-depth episode. So what do you think about the stories we covered? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.